Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Yesterday, update 2.4 dropped to the live servers. This update was only on test live for about two weeks or so, and now that it's finally here, I thought I'd explore the new biomes myself and go over what I think of them, how practical they are, any issues, and some interesting information about what might be my new favourite biome, the Ashlands. Firstly, we'll start off right in the middle of these new biomes with the Floodlands. This is designed as a sort of middle ground area between the new biomes and should be a sort of a Goldilocks zone for adventurers and builders, according to the patch notes anyway. Exploring this biome, it seems decent, it feels quite lush and lively, though it's not too overdone, and though it is indeed a floodplain, there is still plentiful land to build and explore, along with an interesting variety of mobs to fight. The southern side of the island even has some roaming dragons, which should prove a nice little PvE challenge for the intrepid adventurers out there. By nature of it being a floodplain, this area of the map is relatively flat and generally makes for a decent building space, especially for PvE or roleplay players that don't really have to worry about PvP raids. This area seems to take some of the best things about the desert from the Exiled Lands and spice it up a little to make it a bit more interesting and flexible, and overall it's a really nice addition. There isn't really too much to say about it as it's quite simple really, but it really does help to break up the monotony of the grassland that makes up most of the Isle of Septar. Now before we head over to the savannah, there is something I must point out, and that is some pretty weird performance issues. Whilst looking around I noticed that looking over towards the savannah often cut my frame rate in half, from average 60 to about average 30. This issue is nowhere near as bad when looking over towards the Ashlands or the main body of the Isle of Siptar. I'm not sure how well this frame drop will translate into the video as I do render at 30fps, but for me it's a considerable drop. I play and record on high settings and whilst I'm not a stranger to frame drops in Conan, this one definitely seems anomalous. Hopefully it's just an optimization issue that gets rectified with the next hotfix. Next we are over in the savannah, the Isle of Dawn. This is a lush, dense biome packed with mountains, flora and fauna, and honestly, it's quite visually impressive. Alongside the natural features are the ruins of the old capital of the Grey Ones, that apparently has an interesting secret lurking just below the surface. Aside from, of course, the performance issues, this biome is visually quite stunning. I haven't personally tried building here yet, but I imagine there are quite a few nooks and crannies you could squeeze smaller builds into, alongside the larger areas that would of course support larger, more extravagant designs. The architectural style of the ruined cities within this biome is really quite nice. Everything seems to be made from a grey stone, and it contrasts really nicely against most other things in the biome. The cities are visually impressive and are full of mobs that really help to tell a story without any dialogue. These mobs within the cities seem to be quite savage fighters that live a combat oriented lifestyle, and the Proving Ground serves as their combat arena, where losers of the fight are butchered afterwards. Whether that butchering is for sacrifice or cannibalism, I'm not quite sure, but the non-verbal storytelling in this area with the mobs and the architecture is stellar. Overall, the Isle of Dawn is a pretty nicely designed area that is unfortunately let down by its performance issues. However, it should prove to be a breath of fresh air and a definite point of interest to both lore hunters and adventurers alike. Finally, my new favourite biome, the Ashlands. This area is called the Isle of Dusk and is a soot-covered volcanic isle that was once inhabited by the First Men, but now only holds remnants of their civilization. Honestly, this area is mind-blowing. The atmosphere here is so thick you can almost taste it, and the island is packed full of themes, imagery and subject matter that any fan of HP Lovecraft should instantly recognise. When loading into the game after this update dropped, I immediately noticed that Funcom had added some more Lovecraftian elements to the game, through some new statues which included the Shagai, Chocho and the Migo. Lovecraftian elements have always been present in Conan Exiles and the Conan franchise at large, with Yogg being a Lovecraftian deity himself, and the descent of Dagon in the Exiled Lands referring to both the Mesopotamian deity and the Lovecraftian Great Old One, who is mentioned frequently throughout the Lovecraft mythos. Flying around this biome, that Lovecraftian influence is very clear. The atmosphere is a bleak and oppressive one, where the sun is blotted out by the volcanic ash, similar to how the sun is blotted out in the opening section of H.P. Lovecraft's short story, Dagon. There are plenty of unearthly beings in this biome, including animals, humanoids, and some things that lay between those two elements. 
There are plenty of strange structures in the biome made from an oily black stone, a Lovecraftian element that was popularised within the Game of Thrones novels as the city of Ashai and Sotheros were both made from this same black stone. Within the centre of the biome is the Fractured Citadel, a black stone structure leaking with an eerie blue light. Anyone familiar with Lovecraft or Bloodborne should immediately recognise the themes of this area, and it does not disappoint at all. Strange beings lurk the ruins of the Citadel, often taking the form of strange abominations that stray from the line of what a normal human should be. There are a few humans within this Citadel though, offering prayers to the undeniably Lovecraftian, tentacle-bearing entity that sits at the centre of the ruins. Aside from the Lovecraftian influences, the Ashlands is a very nice area indeed. It might not be the perfect place for builders, but adventurers and warriors will have a great time in this area fighting off the horrors, and there are plenty of them to fight. This biome is probably my new favourite due to its purposeful design, interesting storytelling, and an atmosphere so thick it's nearly inescapable. And there we have it, the three new biomes that have made their way to the Isle of Siptar in Conan Exiles. Thanks for watching, let me know what you think of these biomes in the comments below. Hopefully, the updates keep coming in at this pace, and console can hopefully join us PC players in braving the horrors of the Isle of Siptar soon enough. If you've enjoyed this video, leave a like, and of course please feel free to subscribe, only 20% of my viewers are sub to the channel, and I publish at least two new Conan Exiles videos every week, so hit that big red button if you enjoyed this video, there is plenty more on the way soon, including the temple of a certain spider god coming very, very soon. The links to my Discord and Twitch are in the description below, and if you'd like to support the channel financially, you can do so on Patreon, or by getting 68% of a two-year deal with NordVPN plus a month free at nordvpn.org slash eradyt, or of course, you can just use code eradyt at checkout. As usual, thanks to our wonderful patrons for supporting the channel. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.